Welcome to another Great Cow Basic um, demonstration. This is a demonstration to show how to debug like, some Great Cow Basic programs. There's a number of options I'm going to show you. There are lots more. I'm just going to show you four options. Okay, so I regularly use these four. I use EEPROM. I write values to EEPROM, show how to do that in a minute. Serial. I use emulators and I use MPLAB IDE. Okay, so I have got um, a program running and um, I'm just going to start up a camera to show you what I've got. I have put a board that I use for testing here on under a camera and I've thrown a random chip in. Okay, all right, I don't know what the chip is yet, we'll have to figure that out. Okay, all right. So just a quick intro lot. This is the chip. I have a programmer attached. I have a serial port, which we'll ignore for the time being. And I have a potentiometer attached via this wire. And this is a pot up here on, in the top, right? Connected to a connector here, which is actually connected to a zero in here. Don't know why that's just gone green, but it has. Um, so I'm gonna power this and we're gonna program it and we're going to read some values back. So the first one we're going to do is EEPROM. Okay, so I'm just going to start up um, and create a program. Uh, I wonder what the program is, the um, the chip is. So I'm just going to start up pick kit two, and it's on the screen somewhere. And the chip is a. There we go. It's a 27k40. It's quite a large chip. So I'm just going to take a copy of the chip by clicking on the word device and I can just go hash chip. Right. First thing I'm going to do is just program it to um, um, put a value that I'm going to read in and I'm going to put that value into EEPROM. Okay, so how do I do that? Okay, dead easy. So I always use option explicit because we need to make sure we don't have any typos. I'm going to dimension a debug value okay as a byte and i'm going to use that in a moment to read the value okay so i'm going to put into that a, a debug value i'm just going to use ad10 and i'm going to read an0 which is there and what we'll do is we'll just read that every 100 milliseconds okay all right now i'm just using this as a val as a way of showing you how to get uh, a value into into um, the EEPROM, okay? So EP write is the write to EEPROM. I'm gonna put it in value zero, and I'm gonna put that debug value into EP zero. I'm gonna program that. Now, oh, I've got to save it quite clearly. We should do that like that. We'll just hex it, make sure it compiles okay. It compiled and then I'm just going to program it. Okay, all right. Now, this is a big chip. Okay, it takes a few seconds to program it. So, what we're doing now is I'm using debug value, I'm just using AD10, which is actually a bit of an issue because I've just put that in a byte. So, we will uh, have some odd values. Okay, but it's worthwhile just showing you. Okay, I'll correct that in the background. So, it's now powered up. I'll put some electricity into it. So I'm just gonna put some power onto that. And then I'm gonna read back the EEPROM using, using Grant Cup, using pit kit, using the pit kit. And look, it's set to 89. So it's getting that value from somewhere. Um, let me just show you in here. Here's the camera. I'm gonna rotate that pot around to zero. I'm gonna reread that. And that's at zero. We'll fancy that because that's at zero volts. I shall rotate that. Read it again. Now this is pretty static. I'm only I'm only getting I'm only getting values um, when I read them back from EEPROM. But I could get 255 debug values. But maybe that's just a bit too hard. We want more dynamicness to it, don't we? Okay. So we're gonna. We're going to leave that all running, okay? 
okay and we'll just leave it we'll just leave it running it's fine because we're going to adapt the that little program and we're going to get serial working okay all right um serial okay so this is a pps device so i clearly need to load pps okay now if i didn't know it's pps i'd have to go to data sheet but you know what i know that a k40 is pps all right um let me start up pps tool and here it is we'll just select the tape and we'll just select the peripheral i want which is a transmit one and i'm going to put it on c6 and then i'm going to edit into here copy into here and it's put in my clipboard and i'm just very quickly going to stick that inside of my little old program here okay that'll do me and then i'm going to put these back this value out to the serial port okay all right how do i do that h serial print that value and then i'm going to h serial carriage return and i'm going to put it to a terminal so i just need the carriage return but there's a bit of a trick i just want to show you what i do i do this every time as boring as this is right i'm going to delete that i do this every time do i do, do loop him I put H serial print letter A could be any letter you like. Close return because I just want to make sure that it's all set up. Well, to make it work, I need to put some constants in, and I just the two constants we need are uh, US baud rate and uh, transmit blocking. Um, oops. I'll just take a copy of those from the help lot, make it easy for you. Put them in there. And then that's our setup done because what I'm, I'm going to confirm it by the, using the letter A. So I'm just going to use the letter A just to make sure yeah, that my debug is all set up. Because out my camera, I've got a cable connected here a lot. And that cable is connected to C6, which is about here on the board. Trust me. It is, it's the way this board works, okay? So, I just need to start up the terminal. I'll rescan it. Um, I've got no com, no, com, I haven't connected the com port, so I should connect the com port. So let me just do that, okay? So I've just connected up the uh, port. There it is, com. Now what is it? This is a little USB, um, TTL converter on the internet, get them. Look, it's connected here. Look, look. it's just a little TTL thing. Dirty ground and um, connected into here. I've now got a, I've got a terminal, so I can connect that into there. And I'm getting all these oh gibberish. Oh, gib and let me just set the terminal up correctly and select the correct baud. And I've got A A A A. Which is fantastic because that's what I want. Okay, and they're coming through at some speed because in here I didn't put a delay. All right, so we now know that the serial is working, so we can revert back to our original program, which was this, if you remember, which is essentially debug value and, and put it out on the screen and wait 100 milliseconds. Good job, I we looked at that piece of code. Just compile that up, and what we're going to see here in the terminal is that um, we're going to get values come out every 100 milliseconds. And I'm only using the read AD to show you values. It's a debug methodology, not the actual command that we're co concerned about. So I use serial for debugging. And um, hey, look, as I rotate the pot, let me show you the camera. At the same time as showing you the terminal, like magic, we get, I rotate the pot at the top, we get different values. So you could use, you can use that. And that's a good method, okay? Another method, let's get rid of these. Might need that again later. These emulators. There's a number of emulators that are quite useful. One's called this, Real Pick Simulator. It's quite useful. What's quite useful about it is that you've got a load of projects inside of Great Car Basic that we've rebuilt, okay? 
and you can simulate LCDs and you can simulate all manner of things and you can output your debug out to an LCD like this. You can use the same approach in with an, rather than a serial, use an LCD. You choose what you want to use, but you're putting the, you're using the input outputs. And in here, you can walk through the memory. You can stop it, and then you can stop it, and then you can walk through the code. Look, fantastic. You can see the EEPROM values and memory maps and variables and processors and stuff. So it's a good method. Another, um, Another simulator is called, let me have a look which one. Chris likes this one. Oh, Pick Sim Lab. Here it is. Uh, this is um, real. You know, this is real. And again, you've got different chips, different inputs and outputs, and you can walk the code. Okay. So you've got emulators. You can stop the code, walk through the code, look for it, and it's the same code, that, the same hex files that you've been using. Okay, so that's one method. And finally, we've got um, MPLAB X IDE. So I'm going to start MPLAB on the other screen here, and that'll take a second just to load up. I'm using uh, version 5.15. It's just powering up. And here we have MPLAB empty. It's just nothing in there at all. Okay. It's just recently installed. Okay. We're going to create a project, new project, and select microchip embedded and a standalone project. And then um, in, you need to tell it the, um, the chip family you're using. 27k40 and then inside say next and then in here select simulator simulator next um, and then once you're through here to the tool chains select mpasm because uh, that's what you're going to be using you're going to take the source code from mpasm and bring it into the ide give it a project name i just give it the same name as the chip and save it now, depending on what chip type you've got, you can do dynamic, you can you can look at the memory in a different way. I'm just going to show you how to get it up and running, okay? So the one thing you must do in the properties of your project is go to MPASM and uncheck enable case sensitivity, all right? Operation one. Your second operation is select source codes source files and add an existing item and you need to add in the assembler that's been created over here now what we're going to do i'm just going to revert all this stuff and take all that out and we're going to go back to the very simple one which was just the the epre the right no, this one which is the ep right okay yeah it works we know it works i'm going to generate an asm file and then I'm going to view that ASM file, and I'm going to take the file path. I'm going to put that file path in here. Bang. In. Select. I've now got the assembler for the source inside of MPLAB. Right. Now, build it. Build main project or press F11. It's now compiled it. Look, build successful. It is compiled using the MPLAB XIDE, the Great Card Basic Code. It is true ASM. All right. Now I can debug it. All right. Press debug and debug main project. It is running a proper program. The code is running inside of the emulator. All right. Let me prove it to you. I can come down to Baz Start. Okay. And I'm going to put program break in it I can put a program break in this thing okay um, so if I come into here I can put a new breakpoint in here look okay so I can put breakpoints in I think, it's F, I think ah I'm in here of course breakpoint so I'm going to stop the program and I'm going to restart the program just to show you 
things are doing what it should do. All right, stop. Okay, let me just, uh, so now we're in the program. Um, I should have done that a bit better than I showed you in actual fact. The user program is running. I pause it. I press F7. I'm walking the code. Look, look. And I'm in the delay. How do I know I'm in the delay? Well, because this piece of routine is the delay routine. But I can see the values in here. Look. Window. Target memory. No, I can see. Like the, I can see all the different memory types. Look, I can see the memory changing. Look, as I'm pressing F7, it's counting through a delay in the assembly. Is there, is there a delay in here? There is. Look, look. Let's take that out. Re, make new ASM. Loads it back into the IDE. It's changed it over here as well. Trust me, it has. You need to stop. You need to debug the main program again. It's done a, and then you're now walking the code in here. Look, you're walking the read. That's the read um, um, of the um, ADC. Then it says in here, and look, move that value into the debug value variable. Hmm, well, where is that in memory? Oh, I can look in here at the top. Look, they, our temporary variable is in memory location two. So if I looked inside of the memory, which was down here, um, I could look at the file registers. It would put it in number two if I were, if I had an input. So and you can generate simuluses. You can come into the here and simulate things. You can make things happen. So you can create that event. So I'm walking the code. I'm press F7. I'm walking the code all the time. So just to prove it, it's just that's just writing out the EEPROM in the emulator. It's now looping back. It's reading here. So I'm going to run the code by pushing F5. It stopped here. It's stopped here because I stopped the code. And it says put out the system read byte into the debug value. Press F7. And I know from earlier on, we said that that value is in location 2. So if I put 55 in there, just an example, right, okay. Um, and then if I run it, it's going to write the value of 55, trust me, into the EEPROM and we can have a look at that in a moment once it's done it okay because we can look at the EEPROM down here file registers EEPROM the first value is 55 because I gave it a stimulus okay so you can use EEPROM you can use serial you can use a number of emulators or MPLAV IDE I don't know how or what your debug problems are but there are three or four, five, six, and loads more of different options on how to debug using Great Cloud Basic. I very, very rarely use MPLAB. Very rarely. I used it last year to debug a stack problem that was highly complicated. I typically use serial, and if I want a quick, some quick um, output, I'll use EEPROM or HEF, depending on which chip it is, because it has less impact inside of my program. So worthwhile sharing, I believe, um, I'll leave it to you. That's, uh, I'll call that a wrap.